Hello. How are you? I am existentially anxious. I feel anxious, especially when I use my phone. And I've stopped enjoying movies, and I never liked guitar solos. And these three things, guitar solos and movies and my phone, have something in common. Do they feel at all similar to you? We're about 30 seconds into this talk now, and I was supposed to say something shocking, a hook. By now, that's so that you won't click away. But I couldn't bring myself to do it. But I've heard that my voice is pretty soothing, and maybe that will be enough to keep you here. <laughs> I'm an AI companion designer. I'm deeply interested in our relationships with our phones. I'm interested in why my phone makes me anxious. And my studio's first little prototype, a kind and gentle friend in your phone called hashtag self care was one of Apple's best of 2018. Are you still with me? <laughs> this is what our relationship, yours and mine, is supposed to look like. I'm supposed to stress you with something shocking and then take you on this journey of rising tension to a climax followed by a short denouement before I leave you. This is the structure of most Western forms of entertainment, like guitar solos and movies. But we do something different in hashtag self-care. Most app designers work with frustration and reward to take you on this journey of rising tension. They stress you with conflict, danger, hard challenges, notifications, or scrolls of algorithmic content. And this stress exploits your fight or flight response. Your fight or flight response makes you want to win, to master the challenge presented. And when you do, you feel satisfied and your stress response ends until you're faced with another challenge or maybe with an endless scroll or an unachievable challenge. Your fight or flight response is one pathway to reward chemicals in your brain. But do you enjoy this? For me personally, I've enjoyed music and movies and apps in spite of this pattern of shock and rising tension and not because of it. I like character development, not plot. And as a girl, I played dolls, not sports. I just want to get to know the characters and exist in their world for a while while good things happen to them. Deepening connection and not rising tension brings me satisfaction. So I invite you to stay with me for another moment. Why don't I care about winning? I've been wondering this, and I found my answer in some research from the UCLA Social Neuroscience Lab from 2000. It turns out that about half of us, or all of us some of the time, have a different response to stress called tend and befriend. When you experience a tend and befriend response, you instinctively want to take care of people or things, connect with your friends, and find collaborative solutions. We do this often in small and big ways. Tend and befriend is why during hurricanes and fires and floods and earthquakes, we tend to help each other rather than tear each other down. And interestingly, unlike fight or flight, these feelings don't only start with conflict. And also unlike fight or flight, they don't end suddenly when the conflict is over. If you like cute animal videos or organizing your bookshelf or following your favorite celebrities or knitting for charity, you may be enjoying some delicious tend and befriend feelings. Tend and befriend is also why I like coding tidy, well-structured software systems and making apps that help people. Does tend and befriend feel familiar to you? When I first learned about tend and befriend, I suddenly understood myself so much better. And that understanding changed my life. 
Pretend and befriend explains why I don't care about winning petty conflicts and how maybe that isn't weakness, but a different form of strength. And maybe you find that as exhilarating as I do. I feel cohesive and sometimes pretty powerful. But for those of us who have the tend and befriend response, our phones stress us and don't give us opportunities to do our natural stress reactions. And then we stay stressed. And this is the first of two reasons that my phone leaves me feeling anxious. So after I read about tend and befriend, I decided to try something. I wondered, could we make an app that works not with rising tension, with rising stress and reward, but with deepening care and connection? In hashtag self-care, there's a character who refuses to leave their bed. They're taking a mental health day, and they're surrounded by their favorite things, like tarot cards and books and plans. And in each of the things is a sort of mini game. And in each mini game, instead of following interaction curves of rising tension from small wins to big wins, we created curves of deepening connection. Our interactions go from messy to tidy, from awkward to smooth, or from disconnected to connected. They get easier over time, not harder. And over a million people have downloaded our little prototype without any advertising. We've been overwhelmed with reviews and messages from fans that directly confirm our approach. We get feedback such as, it's like it put me in a trance, it's the most calming app I have. Or, I feel as if the little avatar is looking out for me as much as I am looking out for them. Or, Thank you for this app. I can tell it will change my life. You might be wondering, if Tend and Befriend is so common, why haven't designers designed for it? Why is it so little known? Let me share with you what I know. Male rats have a fight or flight response to stress, and early stress research was frequently done by men studying male rats. When the female data didn't fit the sample, they threw it out and blamed menstruation. <laughs> Among humans, women and men may have either response, but we may be able to say that more feminine people tend to have a tend and befriend response, while more masculine people tend to have a fight or flight response, whatever femininity and masculinity are. Regardless, early stress research was one kind of person studying one kind of reaction, and I was horrified when I read that. And then I read more, and I looked around at my colleagues in the tech industry, and I saw the scope of this problem and the second source of my anxiety. And now, each morning, while I balance precariously in the shower, trying to shave my legs, which is something that a lot of people do in the shower, I wonder why there is no ledge or nook to put my foot on. While I do that, I think about how many fields of science still disproportionately study male rodents. And I think about how we didn't know the shape of the clitoris until 1998, and how it's still incorrectly defined all over the internet and in dictionaries today. And I contemplate how no one in power noticed that airbags are very dangerous for shorter people until 2011. And I contemplate how Color film was optimized for light skin, and this injustice continues today in the design of face tracking and eye tracking. And I marvel about how, as a visible woman in the tech industry, I have 117,687 petty harassers in my Twitter block list so far. <laughs> All those little fighters engaged in predictable reactions to a platform that is designed to stress them. And I bless their starved little hearts while I think about our, how our society has been designed largely by and for one kind of person over generations.
our products, our processes, our structures, our values, our roles, our rules, our systems, our institutions have been designed largely by and for one kind of person who likes to win or who has repressed his feminine traits in order to not see himself as weak. And so it's not only that my phone feeds me notifications and endless scrolls that I can't connect with. The second source of my anxiety is the content in those scrolls. It's our world. I'm living in a world that wasn't designed for me. This prioritization of winning, to be honest, it disgusts me. It's led us to an absolutely ridiculous wealth divide and disastrous changes to our climate. And I can't continue to flatten myself into something I'm not, and I can't pretend that our world is not in crisis. And in this context, I am not interested then in finding peace for my anxieties. My anxieties are real, and they're valid, and they're useful. I'm very interested in channeling anxiety into care and connection and better designs that work for everyone. Underrepresented people face many frustrating barriers to success, but we also have the greatest opportunities to create the most interesting and innovative and revolutionary and necessary and valuable and industry change. Those powerful men have already created what works for them, and they're refining details now, while the rest of us have sweeping changes that we are ready to make for each other. Everything traditionally feminine is just waiting to be automated and systemized. Cooking and cleaning and household management could be systemized just as auto repair or plumbing have been. Social media could be pushed to be more collaborative and solution-oriented. I know women working on the pieces of such things now. Governance and justice and commerce don't have to be about winning, and displays of power don't have to be about bigger and better yachts and jets. Because most of us are a mix of feminine and masculine traits. That's how humans are. And none of us need to be a masculine caricature to be powerful. We can all be complete, mature persons. So let's cultivate a grown-up, tend and befriend mindset. Would you join me in exploring these warm and gooey and pro-social and useful feelings? Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so the next time you're in a hotel and there's a shoe mitt but no tampons, n notice. And the next time you're at the gym and every television in front of the treadmills has rich white men telling not so white lies on it, just think of those ignored female rats and how transformative their strength is. And if you have the energy, stay in that moment with all of us who want to do things differently and look right into your anxieties. Maybe the problem is not within you but the solutions might be. Maybe you have a startup in you. And if you're underrepresented, there are more and more of us here to help you. Thank you.